Today we launched the return of our birds, bees and butterflies segment. As you start working on your gardens this spring, we are going to talk about how Michigan's bees can really help put food on our dinner tables. As our Paula Tubman shows us, what we feed the bees helps them feed us. So when we start planting our gardens for pollinators, it's very important to think about your decor, what matches, what you're trying to get done, what you want that to look like. But we really also need to start actively thinking about a different strategy so that we can really zero in on native pollinators. And that means planting native plants. I am here featuring the new bee bar where everybody can be happy to learn about bees. Tim Travis of Goldner Walsh Garden and Home in Pontiac is one of our favorite garden guys because he doesn't just sell plants, he knows them. The reason for the native plants is they tend to be much better for the bees and pollinators because they have not been hybridized out of being productive nectar producers. The key to success is diversity, diversity, diversity. This is what we call a single flower. You can see how it's just kind of open. And this is what we call a double flower. Uh, which has been hybridized just for uh, aesthetic interest. The problem here is many of the bees and the butterflies cannot get much from this from as a food source because the uh, nectar part of the plant has been hybridized out of them. So it's important to keep, uh, keep that in mind when you're selecting plants. I mean, these are beautiful, but these are better as far as uh, providing uh, food food sources. While there's lots of focus on honeybees, and there should be, honeybees are not native Michiganders. Dr. Rufus Isaacs is an entomologist or bug guy at Michigan State University's College of Agriculture and Natural Resources. Part of the reason they were originally brought to the U.S. is because people needed candles. Honey, you know, honeybee colonies provide that that wax. And while we absolutely need honeybees to get abundant, healthy crops that feed people, we also need to make sure we are taking care of the native pollinators. We feed them, they feed us. They are adapted to our environment, so they've seen the kinds of weather that we have. They, um, many of them are perennial, so that means you get them started in year one and then they continue to grow and will uh, provide you blooms for many years, many years to come. Because the bees are from here, uh, that I'm working with and interested in, and the plants are from here. They've already had thousands of years to work out how to work together, so many of the native plants are really good for um, pollinators and supporting, giving them the food they need. So how do you figure out what's native and what's non-native? Well, Michigan State University has made it really simple by giving us a roadmap and you can figure out which flower path to follow that works for your particular project and birds, bees, and butterflies. Paula Tutman, Local 4. And we did put the MSU Native Plant and Pollinators Guide on our website on clickondetroit.com. And Paula would also like to hear from you about the topics you'd like to address in your gardens this year. So look for contact information on our website. Send us your suggestions. We really would love to hear from you.